Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose ah, we're here. I would have been louder, but I was worried about the lawyer. Yeah, the lawyer. Lawyers, guns, and money. Huh? Shit has hit the fan. Oh, yeah. The song. Oh. Send funny. lawyers, guns, and money. The shit has hit the fan. How? Wow. Warren Zevon. I like Zeev. Oh, he's the greatest. He's well, got we a got son, one. too. Sorry. Does he? I believe he's got a son who's in the game. No well, that's kidding. Rufus Wainwright. Ah, Wainwright. Sorry, Different Wainwright. Guys. Yeah, well, uh, Zevon, he's the best, and uh, he died, and he went on Letterman. That Letterman gave him the full hour, Whoa. and uh, he had one of the great lines. He goes, I think I made a uh, strategic error by not seeing a doctor for 35 years. <laughs> he had cancer, he was eating him, he plays three songs, and it's uh, really magical. I remember watching it live, I got the VHS. Wow. Uh, ooh, where? of London. Yeah, that's him. One great, of great tune. I'm all great. fucked up because we got three cameras going here. We're Yikes. back to three cameras and it yeah. feels like a real I know. I feel situation. Like J-Lo at the, at the TMZ. And they weren't cheap. Every ten minutes, Chuck's like, hey, you owe me six grand. I'm you like, got what? that right, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Extremely. I think it was six fifty each. Six fifty yeah. each. Hachi machi. Let us know in... if those are cheap cameras. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. What am I made of money? The beep went off. I'm paying That's money. My beep uh, my money alarm. I'm broke. <laughs> Bring the lawyers guns and cameras. Uh, but anyways, good to see you. I'm all fogged up. I'm fucked, Jerry. It's the worst spring of my life. I'm sick or gay for the third time in six weeks. Springtime for Hitler. I'm worried about your immune system. You're turning into a Jew over I, here. I think I have AIDS. I, you know what it is? I think I Prep. have to be one of these guys that carries around a bottle and squirts it on his ass. A bottle? The the. You drink it again? You know those people? Oh, Purell. The, yeah, you don't want to be the Purell because then it's going to weaken you more. you got to stand strong, push through. It's just allergies. It's pollen. Well, that's what I thought. And uh, Kevin Pollen. <laughs> 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 I, I've never had allergy. We talked about this, I think, last year, two years ago. I had the first allergy attack of my life. I've never been an allergy guy. I've never been a sick guy. Perfect attendance, eighth grade, ninth grade, missed one day sophomore year. Perfect attendance, junior, senior Same year. Same here, perfect attendance. Yeah, bad student, perfect attendance. Same here. Same here. Bedwetter as well. I was always there, and uh, I'm just not a sick guy. But this is three, and I, maybe because I'm run down, I'm stressed. I, I did the, the festival. I was crowd surfing in Austin. I slept for two hours, 90 minutes. That'll do it. My father's gay. And then people keep telling me the allergies, but then I have yellow snot, which means infection, I thought. Is that right? That's what I thought. Yellow snot. What about red jizz? Red jizz. That's my favorite pirate. <laughs> red <laughs> jizz red, here. <laughs> old red jizz. <laughs> <laughs> um, Woo! But uh, so I'm all, I got the, the fog, but I think it's allergy and cold, but I'm taking... Uh, what do you call it? What's the D? D. Claritin D. Ooh, you went with D at the end. I'm taking Claritin I D, see. which is d- 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 zips you up, and then I take Tylenol P at night, which makes you sleepy. They sound like DJs. You know Claritin D? <laughs> PD, NYPD. Uh-huh. Um, woo, woo, God bless woo. them. We could use a few more of you. Defund them. Speaking of police, Uh-oh. can we get a couple police down in Austin, for God's sakes? <laughs> uh, Call the National them. Guard. Well, I we got to keep it weird. No, we got to have blue hair and, and uh, nose rings. I think we should make it a little less weird down there. That city sucks. Really? Well, you... I love the city, but the downtown. The downtown is a, is a trash heap, and I thought they were cleaning up for 10 minutes. They had a, a guy with a big broom came in there and pushed out all the hobos, but they <laughs> came right back. <laughs> well, it's cleaner. It's better than it was okay, in 2021. Okay, okay, cleaner. When I got my shit, but you walk around. I'm, I'm not joking. Like, I want to run for office there and be like, guys, they got a serial killer on the loose. No. Yes. Hate a loose kill. The l- l- the rainy street serial killer. Mm, the, when it rains, it pours. The kooks. And this is what bothers me. I talked about this all over uh, the festival. I, I'm just jumping into it. We'll, we'll leave. We'll come back. We'll come around. 
I could take it around. I could bring it back. <laughs> Pull it back. Yeah. You got to get on the Patreon and watch oh, that comedian. Oh, yeah. Cosby, baby. How good was that? How fun was that? That was great. It killed it. The audience loved it. You're missing out if you're not on the Patreon, folks. That lingered. That hanging out, watching that movie together, bullshitting, rewatching. It really, it, it lingered. I'm still like in bed, buzzing. A buzzing. And people never saw it, a lot of people. So I'm getting DMs like, whoa, this is amazing. I rewatched it without you idiots talking. Good stuff. Yeah, that was fun. Get on the Patreon. And thanks to everyone who's on the Patreon. We're so grateful. But Praise Allah. Austin, I kept saying this. I've never been in a place where people are so in denial Interesting. about a downtown. I mean, 6th Street is just wild. There's websites dedicated to the fist fights and the brawls. We saw our lady smash a bottle. Really? Yeah, it's just nuts. Wow. Sixth and Brazos. Forget about it. Oh, Stay I clear love there. It's my favorite porn site. <laughs> um, but I, I was talking to some of the volunteers there, and I go, this is crazy out here. And she goes, how do you mean Mm. And I was like, well, you know, the, all the crazy folks. And she's like, crazy folks. Wow. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you out of your mind? And then she goes, where are you from? Like, I'm from like oh, Iowa. Oh, like it's condescending. I'm oh, like, what a cunt. New York City. And she's yeah. like, it's not like that. I'm like, no, it's not. Wow. When you're saying it's not like New York, that means it's really because we got Cookville Central PA down here. But going to Austin is like swinging with two bats. I'm back in New York. I'm walking around in Bermuda shorts and flip flops. Stroll. I'm high fiving the hobos here. Right. Because right. it is. Uh, Danger, really? Will Robinson over there. Oh, wow. it's dog shit. I had no idea. I figured this—you couldn't get worse. People hitting with hammers, McDonald's, the kooks on the subway, the guy throwing shit. It's bananas out here. That was like monkeys throwing shit. Yeah. Line from comedian. Check it out, Patreon. Um, but yeah, it's 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 Kook Deville down there. And you got to walk around that area because we're we're living in that area. You know, it's all the clubs, the mothership, the the Antons, the the Vulcan, the Creek. It's all yeah. in that perimeter. Yeah, the festival's all in the perim, and uh, it was a real situation down there. And I, I my I, my brother in law lives there. He said that there's a shortage of cops. There's like 350 oh. cops understaffed. I wonder why people don't want to be police. Yeah. Oh, it's a, interesting. It's an interesting thing there that happened. But uh yep. anyways, great time. Great to see you. So I'm all fogged up, but I'm happy to be here. Well we like uh the old foggy list. It's good to have you back, Fatty. It's been a while. You've been there, I've been here, we've been everywhere. All over the place and by the way I almost had an incident this morning or, or witnessed one. I saw one too Tell me about yours. Okay. Well, today, this morning, you know, Steve Rogers and I, we go out for a walk, get a coffee. I got all the neighbors over there. Oh, yeah. Cute kid. Which is, uh, you know, it's ups and downs, strikes and gutters. He's You'll... cleared in D. Oh, he's got a huge D. Oh, yeah. Tylenol <laughs> penis member. Yeah. Penis okay. member. By the way, he's opening for Nate B this weekend. Is that right? That kid can open. He's Woo! opening for me, Nate, Regan, uh, Regan the other guy. Tomlinson. Oh, wow. Papa. Papa. Come to Papa. He is the opener. Papa's got a brand new fag. <laughs> 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 he's um, <laughs> all over the uh, it, I wish I had a bouquet to throw yeah, at you. Uh, can we make that the title? <laughs> ah, probably not. <laughs> No, nah, that's not going to be good for the algo, but um, we'll bleep it. We'll cut it out. Uh, uh, it's not worth it. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, he's all over the place. But we went out for a nice morning stroll. Which okay. I love a morning stroll. Underrated. Big fan of the stroll. That's what's so brutal about the spring because it's, it's fucking me up, but I need it. Oh, so I just go yeah. in there. It's a crisp 58 and it's sunny. You can't do better. Sunny, come home. scoop a boop so we're walking, and, and uh, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm a fucking city wizard. I'm clocking everything and everyone. I'm like Terminator. Which yeah. Like, doo, 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 doo. You're the grand wizard. Um, so it's got, I got little stats in my eyeball. Oh yeah, you're scanning. And we're walking. I, go, I do that. I'm like, I think there's a fight up here. And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm telling you. We get closer. Old man. Like they, sometimes there's old New Yorkers that mm. feel like they're from like back. Country Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. He's got the trucker hat and like the white hair sprayed everywhere, big beard, and he's like, This is my home. Uh -huh. You get out of my home. Oh, I guess wow. there was a young boy, uh, like sitting in, in his uh what do you call it? Awning the steps. Stoop. The stoop. He's on his stoop, and I, I, we got there in the middle of it, but I don't know if he was smoking or reading porn or what he was doing, mm. but uh, the old man was like, get the fuck out of here. Never again. Whoa. Go over there. Go down there. And the kid was like, what? And then the kid goes, why are you yelling at a child? Whoa. But the kid was like 17, which is funny because okay. you categorize yourself as a child in this situation. Interesting. But, but when, you, he fucks. Yeah, he's finger fucking his mother. I don't think he thinks sure. of himself as a child. 
But the guy was like, next time I come down here, it's with a baseball bat. Wow, old school. Yeah, which I assumed he was going to say the police. Yeah. But he, he went straight to baseball bat. Well, police are out. They would take too long. They wouldn't help. Get the bat. Get to Louisville. Yeah, but uh, this is like 9.15 a.m., and the kid was like in like a school uniform. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't like... Uh, Leading the thug life here. Right, right. Well, what about the truancy? Or maybe are we in summer? When, when are kids in school? Good point. I feel like they're never in school. I see kids walk around my neighborhood. I hide. I go behind a bush because I'm scared of them. Oh, yeah. Any group, any, three or more of any Woo! gender, race, anything. Totally. Just a group is terrifying. Terror. I see three trans people. I sign them up for swimming. But, <laughs> um,. All right. Well, but it was I, uh, it was something. It was hot. Now my incident, you're not going to believe because it's too kooky. Okay, I'm interested. The tunnel between uh, the seven and the F, right over here on uh, Bryant Park. Oh F sure, train. yeah, I know the tunnel. You know the corridor. Yes. So every day I have to walk that corridor because I take the F. And there's a there's a tall older black guy just strumming the old banjo. He's playing a Hey Let It Be or <laughs> Hey Jude or whatever the hell, and. I, I see him every time I walk by, and this time there was a little person, no arms, two nubs. Oh, I think I've seen that guy. Two nubs fighting the guitar guy. What? He's just swinging the nubs, and he's hitting the guitar. It's going, rawr, rawr. <laughs> he's hitting the guitar, and the, the black guy is trying to be nice. He's like, dude, and he's just shoving the kid or the guy. Okay. This guy's wearing military shit. He's got a, a vest on, and he's like, come on, I'll kill you. And he's just swinging his nubs. Oh, my God. How long are the nubs? Uh, I'd say eight inches, nine inches. Oh, okay. That's a decent nub. It's like a, it's like a Roger's dick yeah, okay. for an arm. <laughs> So he's just swinging the nubs, and the guy's like pushing him back, like, dude, just leave me alone, leave me alone, because he could just murder this guy. He could kick him right in the face, or he could hit him with the uh, the guitar. Like this? That's about this it. Length? That's about it. Because remember, he's a little guy. Yeah, that's not bad. That's enough. It's it's almost like a uh, a pinball flipper. Oh, you know, where okay. they're just doing this, and no no damage is being done. Uh huh. So the guys just push him away, and eventually the the, the midget comes up, and he really gives a good nub whack, <laughs> and he hits the guitar hard. So the guy goes. Like that, and he goes goes all the way on the other side of the corridor, hits the wall. His hat and his headphones fly everywhere. Wow! Now I'm walking by right then. He goes right in front of me, and I go, "This guy is the agitator, uh -huh. the nubby." Yes. So should I help him with the hat and the the sun or the the headphones? Because he can't pick them up. Oh, he's got no. He's got to tong it. You know, he's got to do like a, a squeeze together. So how does he get him in the first place? I wonder. I think there's a lot of finagling. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of does wiggle. He, and does he kick him to the side and then lay maybe, it out on him? maybe? I, I think it's a whole day long process. But I didn't know what to do, and I felt for the guitar guy because I think he was the the victim. Yes. So I didn't grab him. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah. All right. You don't want anything to do with this guy. Okay. I don't care for this nub nublock. So I I got uh, Chuck nublock. Nub nuts. So I got past him and uh, comfortably nub. And I got past him and I look back and they're just fighting. I'm walking backwards, watching them just go at it. And I had to come to the pod. Wow, that's wild. That's that's New York, baby. Right in the subway, nub nub midget fighting uh, with uh, Bill Withers. Nub nub. That's the end of the, the, the last song in Return of the Jedi. It goes, dun, 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 nub, nub, nub. Oh, yeah. That? Boy, that movie and he's like fell an Ewok. Off. Yes, yes. <laughs> that movie's really ludicrous. As it's a silly. boy, I thought it was like the greatest thing yeah. ever. Yeah. It, it was like, let's sell more merchandise. Get a bunch of fucking midget furries. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, rub a dub nub. nub. <laughs> <laughs> One midge in a tub, but. Yeah, that got ugly. Yeah, that's fun. Well, I love a good, fun incident. I really do, by the way, in New York. I mean, Austin really made me feel quite flowy here. Oh, great. That's nice, because you've, uh, you've been hating the city. Yeah, I, I mean, I still hate it, but, um, you know, it's got its benefits. It's nice. We have our charms. Spring is nice. Springtime. Oh, when the weather gets good in New York, you go, oh, yeah, this is a decent city. Because in the winter, you're like, what are we doing here? We can't go outside. Then if you do go outside, you get shot in the leg and stabbed in the throat. And then you go back inside, uh, and your apartment's the size of my ass. Well, Austin, I tell you, it's got a lot of appeal. You know, I got some family down there. There's some clubs down there, some podcasts. It's uh, The bats, the, the river. I love Austin. I love Cap City. I love a lot of it. But, uh, you know, they're, they're missing 300 cops. There's a serial killer. There's kook 
kook mania down there. Yeah, yeah. The traffic sucks. Flying in and out of there is a goddamn oh, nightmare. Oh, they got to expand it. that airport. It's, it's the size of my dick hole, and there's a million people coming in and out every day. Yes, exactly. And all the flights, everyone's getting picked up at like 3.30 a.m. for Moon Tower. Right. Uh, like literally 3.30 a.m. Wow. I got picked up at 5. And then the L.A., you ever have this where like, I hung out with Luke Monez all weekend. Love He's the great. Monez, 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 Monez. I'm, I'm going into to my flight. I'm heading to the Delta Lounge, and I hear like Los Angeles will be boarding, and I'm like, oh, I forgot, Monez is over here. So I go over to see Monez, and then I see like seven comics that I'm not interested in talking to at five fifteen. Sure, sure. So I immediately you're like, ah, you dive behind the the lounge and, yeah. and barrel roll, I'm and I was like, I tried to say hi, but yeah, you're surrounded. That's why the lounge is just, you got to love that lounge. The worst is when you see a kook that you don't want to talk to in the lounge. Because now you're like, ah, this is my safe space. Yeah. As I was leaving the lounge, I saw Jordan Jensen and Brendan Sagalo. Oh, all right. Well, that, that's fine. Who I love. But I'm also in uh, lounge morning mode. Ah, you're just zoned. I got my podcast going, my cup of tea. I got one eye open, two assholes open, and then all of a sudden I see these queefs, and I'm like, oh, hey! And yeah. I, I, it was kind of nice because I got them in. Oh. They were trying to get in. They were like, I, I have a card, I have 40 bucks, yada, yada, and I go, I'm diamond. Put them on my tab. Whoa, and you can I do a like, double? Evidently. Wow! I'm, the, I'm King Delta over wow, there. Wow, Diamondback over here. Yeah, I'm going to the Diamondbacks game in a couple weeks with uh, Luke Bonas. Hey, it's all coming together, folks. It all comes back around. Dustin Diamond. Oh, yeah, he was a piece of shit from what I've heard. Apparently, and a hell of a porn star. He had a decent hog on him. Is that right? Clarendon D. Wow. Um, Double D. Yeah, screech. Too bad dicks don't have ratings like bras. A, B, C, double Ds. I'm glad they don't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Dicks are so weird because they it's an organ. Mm-hmm. Organ but, trail. Yeah. <laughs> organ donor. <laughs> but you can't they can't get bigger. You know what I mean? Like I beg to differ. Well, you can work out your bicep, get it bigger. Oh, I see. But and you can get fat and your arms get bigger because you're fat. But your dick never moves. But I think organs don't get bigger. A muscle gets bigger. Your ah, arm's a muscle. Your right. dick's not a muscle. True. Right? I guess you're right. It pulses, so it feels kind of muscly, you know, because you can flex it. Yeah, good point. Uh, but I think it's definitely not a muscle, because if it was, we'd just go <laughs> with the roids. Yeah, I'd have a big fucking dumbbell attached to it. I mean, yeah. there's a dumbbell attached to it. <laughs> and <laughs> but, uh, I'd be doing curls and whatnot. Exactly. Also, my dick looks like it's on roids already. It's angry. It's purple. <laughs> it's as veiny. You know, it's got tiny balls. Yeah, yeah, heavy but metal. Your dick, at least, it gets big and hard. It doesn't grow, I guess. It gets hard. But my dick is teeny right now. But Same. If you know, you took your shirt off, it would be a little bigger. That's true. I'll take it. I can that's, still get some blood flowing. That's true, Marty. All, All right, right you me, wanted to get going. Let me throw it because I got some wacky stuff. Okay, give me some wax. Hi, folks. It's me, Joe List, from the podcast Tuesdays with Stories. This week's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. When we all spend our time helping others, it can be hard to remember to take care of ourselves. That is the truth, ain't it? BetterHelp's online therapy gives you the tools to lead a balanced life at an affordable price. I love BetterHelp. I need therapy. I'm going tomorrow morning. I can't wait to get there. Alan Lefkowitz is my therapist. He's the best in the business, and it just makes you feel clean. Leading up to the day before, I feel better. I can't believe I didn't go to therapy earlier. I actually did. I went as a child. I went when I was eight. I went again in my early 20s. I went in my 30s, and now I'm back. I love it. BetterHelp's therapy is flexible and completely online. No sterile doctor's office here. Take care of your mental health from the comfort of your own home. If you need to change therapists, switch anytime at no extra charge. Give therapy a try so you can keep supporting the ones you love without leaving yourself behind. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. As always, for so long now, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Summer is coming, which means hot weather and sticky balls. Be prepared and keep it breezy in your pants by stocking up on sheath underwear. I got a whole bunch. I might hit up old Robert Patton for a few new pairs soon. This guy's got the best underwear ever. He's a Tuesday. He's one of you. He's one of us. It's got two pouches, one for your dick, one for your balls. 
keeps things separated so those gonads can get some airflow. It's all I wear. It's all Mark wears. It's the best underwear. It's like the official underwear of fucking real comedy. Real comedians wear sheaf. I'll tell you that. Enjoy the heat without your dick stuck to your leg. For our ladies in the audience, also, plenty of lady gays out there. We appreciate it. Check out Sheath Sports Bras, bikini briefs, and boy shorts. Get some of them. Send us a photo in them. Go to sheath.com, sheathunderwear.com. Excuse me, I got distracted because I was sexually harassing the female fans. Use order Tuesdays to get 20% off your first order, plus Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code Tuesdays with a G. Get Sheath Underwear, support the show, support your balls. All right, well, first off, I've been gone a lot, a lot of road, a lot of bullshit, a lot of pods. So I said, let me take the big, fat missus out for a night on the town. All right. So we get a dinner reservation going. We get a we get a couple of cocktails. Women like to go to locations. Of course. Cocktails here, dinner there, dessert there, anal here, you know. So... Uh, we get a couple cocktails and we start just vibing. And you go, oh, this is why I like her. Yeah. You know, because yes. you forget. Because your ship's in the queef. Because uh, ship's in the night because, you know, she works, I work. You're going in and out. You avoid people. You avoid her. So when you actually sit down, you go, hey, this is all right. Yeah, the best. When I'm on vacation with my wife, it's the happiest I ever am. Oh, really? You're on the road, like the physical, you're driving around, you got nothing to do, you're at the ocean, the lake, the pool, whatever. You're just like, this is the best. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice to get out because when you're in that same dingy, drab shitbox of an apartment, you kind of go, ah, I just shut down in here. Yes, and you're like, what do you want to watch? Well, we already watched that. Well, I want to watch this. Well, I don't care about that exactly is there food in the fridge no should i make you something should we order in now ah, what am i doing i'm not even that hungry all right your feet stink you know that whole thing yep and uh so we're we're having a great night out and we skip dinner and go right home to bang Woo. like one of those wild kind of half in the bag flip her around put Objects in her bang. Yeah, I love that. I love objects in bang. Yes. OIB. OIB. So objects may appear larger, whatever. So we're going at it. And then I, I we stay up all night rolling the hay, jizzing, red jizz came out. Arr. My dick looks like a hook. Um, and so uh I wake up, beep, beep, beep. I got like two hours of sleep. I'm hung over. I gotta fly to Bozeman, Montana. Wow, Bozo, the clown. Now, now it's one of these queefs flights that only leaves at 7 a.m. or 9 at night. Yes. No middle ground. We call it the neutral ground in New Orleans. You guys call it a median. Hmm? You know the median? On a car? On, on a street? Yeah. We call it the neutral ground. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I never knew that was different until I moved away. Well, we say rotary in New England. Everyone else says roundabout. Oh. I've a rotary my whole life. Rotary. Yeah, I don't know. Rotary phone. So that yeah. makes sense. It's yeah, I think so. Circular phone dial. Yeah. Huh. Rotary club. The rotary club. What is a rotary club? I think it's a boat thing. I thought it was like Freemasons. It's just one of these places. Well, it's a couple of white guys who are angry. The rotary club. That's all I know, and they drink... Yeah. I don't know. Wasn't uh, Catch Me If You Can, wasn't he in the Rotary Club? Yeah. But then there's the Elks. Yeah, there's Elks. What do they there's do? There's VFW, there's KFC. Right. KFC. KFC. And the Knights of Columbus. Oh, Knights of Columbus. Is that Italian? Columbus Circle, which is a Rotary. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it's a little Italian. Then there's some veteran stuff in there with some yeah. war guys. A lot of groups. A lot of groups. I think men like groups without women. Well, we need groups. We need to get together and hang. We've got to be together. Social creatures, the clan, you name it. Yeah. So, uh, got to get out to the airport, 7 a.m., yada, yada. You fly to Denver, which is deceivingly long. Yes. You know, you're like, ah, Denver. Yeah. And boy, that's a good four and a half right there. Yeah, it's a chunk, especially going against the jet stream. When you're going yes. west, everything's longer. Hate a jet stream. So uh, uh, get to Denver, you connect, get to Bozeman. You know, one thing about Denver, they have an open air balcony. I if you go to the end the of the airport, it's just a giant balcony where you can leave the airport, which feels weird, and you're outdoors on a giant balcony because the Rockies are there. Interesting. Where was I just? Oh, Austin has a similar thing for smoking. Oh, really? Yeah, at the Delta Lounge. just like an outdoor portion. Makes Post- you want to smoke. Portion? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Portion control. So you can go out there if you're not ripping a butt. 
I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's America. Yeah, why not? So the people are out there. We get into the Bozeman flight. Now you're on a fucking single-engine Cessna. Uh, yes. You land in Bozeman, and Bozeman does not disappoint. It's a log cabin. The airport's the size of uh, Brad Williams' dick. <laughs> it is tiny, and it's wooden, and it's uh, cute, and it's the, the fucking scenery, my God, outside the airport. It's bananas. Wow. Now, did the lady come to Bozeman? No. She hates nature. She hates Montana. She hates me. <laughs> so get to Bozeman and uh, meet up with Youngblood right away. Like We just landed together. Hey, what's up? Youngblood's ah, there. Great feeling. Great feeling. We go get the rental car, and it's one of those things where it, you got to love a small place because the, the rental car is right there. And it's parked right outside. There's no shuttle. There's no go down to Hertz 10 miles away. It's all right there. I just had the same experience in Indianapolis. I la- I'm like, I want to move to Indiana. Yes. I think I'll be the wealthiest person in the whole state. Same exact that, right? thing. The car was 40 bucks. Right. 40 bucks. Exactly. I got a haircut 10 minutes ago. It was 40 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I, yes, yes. Look good. Look good. I, I la- same exact thing. I'm on the highway and there's zero traffic. I can't imagine there being traffic. No. I was like a lane. I was just fucking. <laughs> it's luxury. Lane. Curious. Two lanes. Ah, yeah. I thought of that. But anyways, yeah, same same deal in Indiana. Yeah. Now here's the here's where I fuck up. I got the air pods in and I'm talking to the lady at the, the desk, so I go, so you know, blah blah, leave the air pod. Oh. I forget the air pod. It's just right oh. there on the counter. Doesn't that kill you? It's disgusting. It kills her too. Well, there's a lot of wax. Oh my god. Waxing poetic. So we get in the rental car, which is right outside. It's snowing in Montana, by the way. What? Still snowing. Oh, I was picturing pink and reds and purples. I wish, I wish. No pink, red beard. And it was white, gray, and ugly. Mm. So we're driving to our uh, shitbox motel. We're doing the Elm Theater. Realize I don't have the AirPod, so I call Hertz, and I go, hey, I think I left an AirPod, and the guy goes, oh, I just talked to you. It's all the same people. There's right. eight people in the whole town. So he goes, I'm looking around. He's on the phone with me looking. And I, hey, Cheryl, have you seen an AirPod? No. Here, hold on. Let me patch it through. Lost and found at the airport. Now I got R- Roberta. She's at the airport going, I'll look for it. They're just looking around for the AirPod. That's, they have nothing to do. Wow. It's like Home Alone. It's adorable. This is insane. Yeah, so we never got that, which is just a bummer, because you live for those headphones. You need a podcast, you need a music, you need a Calm app. Every time I lose a AirPod, I just order one immediately on Amazon. I'm like, give me oh, a new one, really? direct, direct flight, just give it to me. I can't live without it. I can't either. No, I want to die. So wait a minute. That's good. Yeah, you could have got one to your hotel or whatever. Really? How much is that? Because I went to Apple Store, 100 bucks for one. Oh, you can buy one? You can buy one, but they, they, they put you through the ringer. I didn't know you could buy one. They're like, give me the serial number, okay, open up your phone, go to settings, and I'm like, can you just sell it to me? What, what's all this? Buy one, get one. It's free. But yeah, I've lost the case, I had to buy a case. I've spent $900 on AirPods on the same case and everything. No, I've lost I lost a few too. Murder was the case that they gave me. They know what to get you. Case closed. So uh, we get hammered in Bozeman, whatever. We do the shows. First show, Great. And it was a lot of like, thank you for coming out. We love you here in Bozeman. Two's gay. It's all pipes. Second show, 10 o'clock on Thursday. Maybe the drunkest show I've ever done in my life. Oh, wow. Like, they got hammered during the opener set. They're yelling, Mark, 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 Mark. Or they, they bury him out or whatever. They bleed out the sound. What do you call that? Blurred out? You know, they... they, they Muffled him. They, oh, muffled. You know, uh, they, they, they blacked out. They bled the sound. Bled Wait. out. They were uh, still booing him when I was on stage. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, uh, Trump, Trump, it's a T. Trunced, tranced. Tranced. Trounced. Trans, right? Yeah. Uh, drowned out. Drowned, drowned they drowned. drowned out. Yes, yes, yes. They, they drowned, drowned about. Out. Yeah. So they drowned him out with, with chance of me. He walks off, and he, you know, when you have that, that, Great moment between opener and headliner where he's like, yikes. And I, he's sweating. His eyes are bulging. And I'm like, oh. That's just the alcoholism. But. Possibly. <laughs> but you're just going right into, into hell. Like, this is it. Feet planted. Just deal with this for at least 50 minutes. Oof. Med so, planner. Yeah. <laughs> planner fitness. So I'm up there and... You know when you're like, this is going to be bad. Yes. Any sentence of a setup is too long of right. attention span. Ugh. So I'm just talking about Montana. I'm making fun of that guy. And now I try to get into the act, and it's kind of getting half laughs. And you realize, do people like stand-up? Does half anyone laugh. like it? You know, like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> half laugh. 
Like, does anyone? Because if they can't, when I'm drunk, I can still enjoy something. Yes. But they couldn't even enjoy it because it was just too much listening and sitting still, and they just couldn't do it. Yeah, I think you get so keyed up and drunk, and they're excited. I think maybe they're excited to see you. They just want to yell something, or they're talking about it. I don't know. People get so fucked up sometimes. I have this with concerts, too. You spend $385 on a concert, and the guy's like, oh, I remember this song. Yes, the first time yes. I saw this song, I was in fifth grade. And I'm like, but you're missing the song. Right, right. Yeah, like I have a joke about smoking, and I'm like, hey, you know, this. my mom used to smoke, and we're, people are like, my mom smoked too. Oh, man, oh right. man, I fucked your mom. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. She watched me do it to your dad or whatever, and now I'm like, back to the show, but they just get too lost. Yes. So, drunk is showing. At one point, there's one guy in the middle who just won't stop, and I go, dude. Enough. And he goes, and I'm oh, like, wow. oh, weird. Now I feel bad because it was like a little kid where he didn't know he was being bad. Right. And then he just said, I'm sorry. And it was kind of this weird moment. Now I'm like, all right, keep yelling. I'm sorry. I love you. And uh, it, it just got bad. I go, at one point, I go, this is a hell gig. And one guy goes, what? No, we love you. And I'm like, well, shut the fuck up. It's a, it's a weird moment. Yeah, I think a lot of people, they don't know how to behave. They don't know how to show it. Maybe in Bozeman, they don't get a lot of shows. I think that's so it. Minimal shows. Showsman. Maybe the uh, the theater normally has, you know, Oklahoma or, or yes, Annie Get yes. Your Guns or whatever, and they're not used to people being like, ah, fuck you, you fat cunt. Yeah, whatever. and there's no semblance of, like, shushing or security. That's all fucked. That, that guy's climbing the mountain or whatever. So at the end, Youngblood brought all his merch, and I go, I can't face him. I'm so mad at him. I'm so hurt. I'm, I feel like an idiot. I feel, I'm humiliated. I'm sweating. And he's like, come on, we got to sell this merch because <laughs> I'm the one flying with it. So I was like, all right. right. And you got to face them, Jerry. You got to just stand there at a table and go, hey, thank you. All right. But they're, it's weird because when it's face to face, it's like the internet. The internet, everybody's so mean. The comments, they're cunts. They hate you. Then you see them face to face like, hey, how you doing, buddy? Yes. That's how it is with the merch. It's hard to know who the problem was because everyone seems pretty normal afterwards. Exactly, exactly. And then you get a couple of crazy headlocks where the guy's spitting on you and yelling in your ear right here because he's so shithouse. But uh, we sold a ton of merch. We we got through it and uh, went to bed, woke up, drove to the hot springs. Ooh. You got to love a hot spring. Natural spring water in this chilly environment, and it's piping hot. Oh, I love that. Love it. So we go there. It's weird. Didn't see any black people in Montana. Hot Springs, four. Interesting. How about that? Well, maybe they like the heat. I think they like the heat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when they make a heated hockey rink, we're going to take that shit, too. Right. So, Chris Rock. They like the heat and uh, some hot ladies in the Hot Springs, too. Oh, I love a hot lady. Yeah, springtime for Hitler. And uh, we did that, and then we... Drove to Great Falls, Montana. Uh, Great Falls, I've been to. You've been to Great Falls? Yeah, I did a show with uh, DePaulo there years ago. Wow. We did a big empty theater. <laughs> And uh, they picked us up in a limo, and Nick refused to get in. He's like, I can't take a limo to this gig. It's, I'm too embarrassed. That's hilarious. And That's so they, a comic. They returned the limo, and they picked us up in like pickup trucks. But it's right there. So he's got to get a new car? Yeah, the guy was like, all right. He was set. You could tell he was a huge fan of Nick. Yeah. He loved Nick. He idolized Nick. And it was just, he's, uh, Nick kept doing his joke. He's like, they're going to think it's Ralph Macchio getting out of the limo. And, and then uh, they took us out to eat afterwards. And famously, uh, famously, Nick and I always laugh about it is what I mean. But they kept being like, "You're gonna, we had the best chicken parm. I know you're Italian. Wait till you have this chicken parm. And we just thought it was so funny for these Montana guys uh, to tell two guys who grew up in Boston and live in New York right. that he's like, this is the best chicken parm you ever had in Great Falls, uh, Montana. <laughs> and uh, it was good, but it was the size of the table. I mean, you ask the oh, follow really? about it, he'll start. T- it's like a 15-pound. It, it was this big. Well, there's a, there's a crackers out there. They're big behemoth of men. Everybody yeah. there was 6'4", uh, Patagonia, camo hat. I couldn't tell who was a tough dude and who was a lesbian. They shake your hand just crush it into dust. Yes, dust. Uh, but yeah, Great Falls is beautiful. Beautiful. Then you do like a Biden joke and they all boo. It's a whole it's a scene out there. Yeah. So we get to Great Falls. Great Falls hates Bozeman. There's oh, really? all these town rivalries. So we're like, we we're just in Bozeman. Boo! Boozman! You know, that whole thing. Oh, wow. By the way, the Los Angelino, they call it Boz Angeles because all the LA queefs moved out there to, to live out the Yellowstone. Interesting because Whitefish, Montana, where I was last year, they had a similar thing where all these hip 
cool, wealthy elites are going yeah. there and driving up the rent. California, it's like the herpes of America because they, they they swarm over to this place and they go, ah, don't come in here. And every every bumper sticker is like, keep our Texas out of California, whatever the fuck. Right. They hate the Cali folk. And Austin's become L.A. Yes. Montana's all fucked up. L.A. itself is dog shit. Ooh, it's ruined, yeah. San Fran, don't get me started. Yeah. Cash app. So, uh, Gash app. Good app for whores. All right. I like that. Put it down. So uh, get to Great Falls. They boo Montana, but they put us in the O'Hare Hotel. Oh. Now this is a, it's a vast wasteland of Econo Lodges, Exxon, and Ruby Tuesdays. It's kind of a flat area. For how mountainy it is, this place is flat and dry like my ex-girlfriend. Who's O'Hare, by the way? You got the airport and you got the hotel. Who's yeah, this guy? I think it was a different O'Hare because it had an eye in it. Oh. The, the Chicago has no eye. No eye in team. No or blind hair. people. Um, so O'Hare Hotel, I, I Googled this place. It was such a fascinating place because everything else is just very drab and brick. And this is like neon green and orange mm. with a big meh, 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 neon light. O'Hare. Oh, that sounds fun. Sounds it's, like a good horror movie setting. Yeah, super kitschy. A lot of crazy colors, like a yellow rotary phone. And, uh... Just, you know, the beehive hairdo lady, and she's like, how y'all doing, you know? And she's got a big ashtray on the counter, and she goes, you ever go to the Sip and Dip? And I go, well, I've never been here. She goes, oh, we got a bar upstairs, Tiki Lounge, called the Sip and Dip, world famous, mermaids. What? There's uh. a big aquarium swimming pool thing and mermaids swim through the walls as you drink. I know this place. Come on. We just did the baseball show last year. I did the minor league baseball. Yes, yes. One of the teams is in Great Falls and our guy, Henry Hunter, the main uh, guy who runs the thing, he went and swam with the people. There you this go. This is ringing bells all of a sudden. We, have a, we had a whole video of it. There's a couple of hot dames with a flipper on, no vagina access, swishing and swashing while you're drinking a Mai Tai. Yes, legendary. It's like legendary. a legendary bar. They've got a bunch of celebrities have gone in there and yes. got in there and so Sinatra, and so. Sinatra, eight yes. out of guy. Give it a goog. It's a whole thing that's in every magazine and top places you got to see in America, whatever the fuck. I remember now. It's been it's all coming back to me. I'm like Celine Dion over here. Yes, yes. Anorexic. So, Is she? Uh, oh, yeah. What are you kidding? She's a Holocaust survivor. No kidding. Yeah. So, uh, well, I guess. Nights when the wind was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> what was that other one? The Titanic? That was. Uh, Not a whole new yeah, world. For you are. My heart will uh, go on. That's the one there. She thinks she won a Grammy on that puppy. Oh, she won everything. Oh, yeah. Celine Dion's fat husband. Remember the Natterman joke? No. Oh, Dan Natterman. One of the great jokes ever. He says, uh, uh, he goes, he was talking to a Canadian person. like, you don't know the prime minister? He goes, I'll do you one better. I didn't know you had a prime minister. Uh, he yeah. goes, even if you gave me multiple choice, A, Justin Trudeau, B, Ontario, and C, <laughs> Celine Dion's fat husband. I wouldn't. And then that's oh, a, that's fun. Fat husband. Funny it, comic. Interesting that she's anorexic and the hubby's fat. Something's going on there. Hmm. It's like being a, in the in the Black Panther, but dating a, a clan lady. Well, I think women like fat men. Really? Yeah, they don't mind. A ch I, I keep hearing more women be like, guys think we want abs. They think we want six packs. But they like. I like. I think fat makes them feel secure and small. Yes. They yes. want to feel petite. Well, that's what's interesting about women is they've. They base everything on how it comes back to them. Mm. We go, tits, I like tits, and that's the end of it. Right. They go, I like fat because I feel small. Right. It kind of has a bounce back effect. But I'm like, I like tits because I feel hard. That's how I, I have so a bit about this. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, also, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I've got, I think a fat guy feels like they can really like mount him. Yes, mount, yes. Like, my wife's on top of me. There's nothing there. It's like a surfboard. It's bone on bone. Yeah, but like someone like Chuck, they really would enjoy <laughs> to ride the jiggle. Grabbing on. Yes, you know? yes, exactly. That's interesting. They Get feel it. little. Yes. All right. Also, how many girls have you heard be like, I want you to gain weight so you don't cheat on me or whatever to all these fat guys? You never heard that? Like, I want you to gain weight so no other girls will like you. And I'm like, but you won't like him. She's like, I already do like him. But it's weird that being fat won't sway your attractiveness to him. Well, whenever I think about being gay, which is a couple times a day. Be, I think about it. I think I'm, you're there. I'm picturing a fit man. I don't want to blow a fat guy where it's like either. the dick is there and then the belly just goes up. And I always picture the belly sitting on my head. 
Yeah. You know, that's not a fun feeling. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, you're on your knees blowing. I'm yeah. laying in the bed. Oh, I go knee. Oh, okay. I want a capper and capper but, cock. That's a good point. The, the fat on the head. Capper dick, should have said. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Fat on the head, yeah, it's got to be. Because I've guess. seen it in porn where the fat's hitting the hitting the, the the tramp stamp. But I don't. Who wants to get blown standing up? By the way, I'm not a big stand up because my I, knees are buckling. I like it standing. No, I want to lie down with my my mm-hmm. hand over my head and a picture of my high school yearbook in front of me. Really? I go standing. Yeah. I want to hold a microphone. I'm doing bits. <laughs> I got an act. I mean, my feet hurt. I got plantar fasciitis. Uh, I feel bad for her knees, and I, I'm I'm like. Buckling and grabbing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I want to lay down. I want to lay down and chill out. Close oh, my eyes, picture relax. my dad, you know? I like standing. I like a standing I desk. You got the power. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, she does the look up. I like that. Oh, the look up. I feel bad because <laughs> this is hard. Well, I think so this is, is easier. That's the same motion. No, this gravity is going against you. You got to go up and down, up and down. You know, you're on your elbows. Well, the gravity helps. This is no gravity. Look at that. Exactly. I'm, no friction. Yeah, it's hard. It's a muscle. I can feel my neck already. But down here, you can you fall into it's the it. Same thing. That's oh. what I said to you. <laughs> <laughs> Switching sides. Uh, I don't season. know. We'll Either way, but I like a lie or okay. a sit. Let's compromise. A sit. Love a, a chair sit. like this. Why well, stand when you Forget can sit? Forget about it. Yes. Then she, she's still on the knees. You're sitting. That's nice. All right. I like the sit. We'll compro. I, I always want to eat a woman out while she's sitting. Like she's got her feet mm. in the stirrups, you know, and the doctor's yes. behind me waiting for me to finish. Stirrups are made for eating out. That's a good point. We should get stirrups in the house. Simple yeah. stirrup. Yeah. Okay. So, what was I Maple talking about? Stirrup. Yeah. Okay. Sip it on some stizzurp. What were we talking about? Bozeman? Great Falls? No, Great Falls. Oh, the mermaid. You went to Great Falls. The mermaid. The I sip and dip. Tried to eat her out. She smelled like fish. Did they let you dip? They let you dip, but I didn't know that till later. Uh. And then by the time I heard that, they're like, Josh Blue came in, he got hammered and swam with the mermaids. I'm like, well, is that a special needs thing, or can we all do that? I feel like he'd be knocking all the water out of the tank. <laughs> yeah, he's a little flappy. But uh, so the mermaids were very nice. I got a photo with them. Check my Instagram. I put it up there. But uh, both shows were like bangers. You know, yes. it, was, it was one of those things where you end on a high note. Uh, young blood killed. I went up. I had some new stuff that bombed, but the rest was great. We sold a ton of merch, and the beauty is you have that beer after, and your feet are up, and you're just feeling good, and then the guy goes, we haven't had a show like that in a while, and he starts listing off the comics who sucked. Oh, I love that. And a lot of them, I was like, really? That guy's a killer. And they're like, oh, he bombed here. Wow. Like, How about that? Oh, you so gotta we, text me some names. I will, and a couple of rude to the staff names. Oh, I love that. My favorite thing to ask people is who's the biggest piece of shit. Yes, a lot of that, and yeah. uh, a lot of them you won't be surprised. Mm. But they're like, we'll never have this guy back. He was a cunt, whatever. So uh, sold a ton of merch, but then they hit you with this. All right, well, you know, thirty percent to the uh, to the house for merch, and you go, I didn't know about that. And they go, Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. So I lost. You lose your shirt because of the shipping and the and the percentage. But what are you gonna do? Posters. But uh, I'll send you an invoice. But we had a great night, and then you go back to the tiki lounge. You get hammered with an Easter Island head with a fucking umbrella coming out of that bitch, having a having a pina colada, and then you walk right up to your room. That's a great feeling. I love a show in the hotel. I love Montana. I love the wide open spaces like yes. that song. Yes. And uh, I love a beer after the show, too. Sounds nice. Maybe a, a stick. Sure. A, cigar, a you bat. Know? A bat, a stick. Uh, that's it. Yeah, so great time. Thank you, Montana. I will be back. I shall return. You got to get out there again because they are craving the gays. I know. I never really worked there. I just went and did baseball shit. Well, I did the DePaulo gig, but that was 25 years ago. So sure. Maybe, oh, I'll see about getting to Montana. woo Now, Now, what do you got there, Fatty? Because I've been hogging this dick. What's the other town? Uh, Billings. And then there's Billings. Missoula. Missoula. That's the town I was in last year. And they have comedy. And everyone kept saying, hey, you got to come. That's, That's the, the one everybody goes, you got to go to Missoula. It's like a college. There's kids there. Yeah. There's women there. There's booze there. I went there. I played for the team. Well, I got a, a, all kinds of shit over here. Let me see. The old man threatening the teenager. 
Well, Moon Tower, I was all over that Moon oh, Tower. Oh, Austin, baby. Uh, yeah, just a uh, great time. We missed you out there. I was uh, missing you like the desert misses the rain. Sure. Because back in the day, we did it in 2016, and it was, there was more of us. It yes. was Chris D and Bennington and you and me. Soder. Soder was there. This is the first year Soder hasn't been there in like 10 years. Wow. Because they always do Bonfire. That's right. Um, so Bobby was in his place. But we had a good crew, Big J. It was so fucking funny. So funny. And then check out his special, by the way. I forget the dog, dog belly. belly. Um, so you had, you had Bobby and Soder and Justin Silver and Josh Adam Myers and Sarah and Ian Lara, who's just a great head. Love the Lara. Ian Fidance, Jordan Jensen, Brendan Sagalow, Luke Moniz. So we had some good ga- Judy so Gold. Hot crew. I love the gold. Gold is funny. She's gold. She's gold. Uh, so that was fun. And then. Uh, Roman Dykes. Just a great time. There's there's just so many com- comics everywhere. I love a good festival. And uh, Sarah flew out a day early. I flew out. It's like it's so early. You got to leave I New know. York at fucking 5 a.m. or a- whatever. Another deceptive flight. That's a good four hour and change. It's a long flight, but I had first class, which is exciting. Ooh, ah, that's a meal on that puppy. Very exciting. Yeah, they gave me some bullshit. Uh, it was okay. Yeah. Locks and bagels. Ah, it's a and- highfalutin. I guess that's not falutin, but. There's a bunch of Gentiles Just going to Texas. What do you give me a bagel for? Give me some scrambled eggs with some cheese on there, and I'll be on my way. But great time. By the way, I had this on the flight. I'm jumping ahead real quick. Jump. And this is my ego. I got an ego. We all have egos, but... uh, Lego my ego. I'm getting on the plane. I'm flying from Atlanta to Indianapolis. I'll I'll, I'll get to the why in a second. Interesting uh, path there. Yeah, well, you know, Delta, Atlanta's... Ah, the hub. When I die, I don't know if I go to heaven or hell, but I'll have a layover in Atlanta. Ooh, that's good. That kills if in Atlanta. (laughs) <laughs> you tell that to a Delta person, they fall on the ground laughing. Well, people love a hub. Well, and so that midget had a couple of hubs. I got the flight. Oh no, it wasn't that flight, by the way. It was the flight from Indianapolis home to LaGuardia, and we fly a lot. Yeah, you got that right. So I look on the thing, CRJ nine hundred. I know the plane. You know the plane. That's one seat over here and two seats over here. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the CRJ nine, which is the smallest in their fleet. CRJ, cock retarded Jew. So I go up there. I'm going to be first on, in line because it's Indiana. There's nobody there. Right. And I walk up with my nice Toomey suitcase. Toomey. And I go, hey, uh, I'm getting on the plane. She goes, well, you need a pink tag for that. That's not going to fit. Uh, I hate the pink tag. And I go, well, it uh, it usually fits. She goes, not on this flight, honey. Oh, uh, here we go. And I go, okay, well, I'll give it a try. And she goes, don't try it. It's not fitting. Here's your pink tag. And I go, well, it's a CR. And now I'm having like a passive aggressive. I go, it's CRJ 900, right? Wow. She goes, she goes, yeah, it doesn't fit. And I go, I got to tell you, it's fit on every flight I've ever taken. And I'm the first one on. So it's like, eventually they run out of room. That's why yes. they tell you. Yes. So I go, well, I think I'll give it a try. And she goes, sir, I need you to leave it at the top of the, uh, at the in the, the elevator. There's like a, what do you call it? It's like a. Luggage elevator at the I top of the thing. About, yeah. like, you got to leave it at the top. It's two two little stacks. Yeah, a shelf. And I go, okay, can I can I try it? And she goes, you want to try it? Go ahead and try it. Now uh, she's mad. Go ahead and try it. It's not going to fit. I'm telling you, but go ahead and try. This is all they have, these people. And I go, okay. And uh, I really killed her with kindness. I go, okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. And I walk straight down there, four C, and just went whoop, click, one click. I shut it to make sure it shuts. Click. It always does. I've been on 75 flights of this fucking bag. I open it back up so someone else can put their bag in there, and I sit down. And this part, this is where I got some character defects. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want so badly to storm out there, push everybody oh, of course. aside. That's what go, I was thinking. Hey there, uh, fat tits, just a heads up. You can take this pig tag and shove it up your pink twat because my right. bag is nice and secure on the front of the plane crj 900 blow yeah. me in how a you, chair how do you like that you old bag how do you like them apples and you're just sitting there and i can't just let go i can't just go well it's her job and whatever no no i'm with you do you want to buzz up can you buzz up to cheryl up there and stick this right in her cooter well then so then 20 minutes pass while they board the rest of the flight and then she comes on you know the oh. gate agent pops oh, in she popped in to do the count and i'm, I'm sitting there i'm like kind of leaning i'm like should i do a thing should i point at it what should oh. i do and you know, you got to restrain, and you're just sitting there, but you just want to be like this. It's in there, you fucking twat. Ah. And by the way, the guy directly in front of me, or behind me when we were boarding, he was sitting in front of me, but behind me, he had the exact same suitcase, and he jammed his right in there. I wonder no if sweat. she gave him the spiel. 
I don't know. I think I could. I, I kind of. Uh, I could hear them. Ta- his husband and wife mm. talking, being like, "Hey, it's not gonna." He's like, "Shut the fuck up." Yeah, because the woman is always like, "You got to listen to her." Right, right. Uh, <laughs> Good. You like the Rosa Parks. You went first, and you got it in. It fit right in. CRJ. So don't let. If you're at home and you're on a small regional jet, CRJ nine hundred, your suitcase will fit. You got that right. Well, unless it's some kind of trunk. Yeah, yeah. Like, but your regular, you know, roller bag. Yes, no. but. You got to be one of the first one on the plane because it, it fills up quick. Yeah, uh, I so. had a lady do this to me once. She said, I have a tiny vagina that's not going to fit. And I said, it'll fit. And boy, did it fit in there easily. To me, t- tiny dick. Yes. To me, tiny. Two inches me. Uh, but let me just give you a little bit of this. So I go out there and uh, Moon Tower was just great. A lot of Tuesdays all over the place. Yeah, it's Fun all hangs. Oh, Vecchione was there too. Yeah, the Vec. Becky Owens is a great hang. You get there, you get to the lobby, and like, there's Ian Lara. You bump into Sagal. I go, let's all go to Magnolia. You know how I love Magnolia uh, Cafe for that case. Magnolia. Queso. These guys, they don't know it, so they go there. We're just having a nice, beautiful lunch. You're eating the queso. And Lara is such a great hang. Good egg and funny guy. Oh, hilarious. Quick I think it's gay, too, I might add. Hey, one black. Yeah, we got a few. All right. Um, That's enough. So we got uh, Monez comes in and Sagalo, but the big event, uh, Josh Adam Myers has really pulled something off here with this uh-huh. goddamn comedy jam. Because oh, you got that right. It really is the culmination of every night at every festival now. True that. And uh, he had a TV show with it for a hot minute. I on know. Comedy Sin. And it's very exciting. And uh, Saturday night's Billy Joel night. He loves Billy Joel. Mm. So uh, everyone's doing a Billy Joel song. So he says, hit me with a Billy. And I said, let me do only the good die. Young. There it is. And I locked that up. That's exciting. <laughs> Friday night, I'm doing Dancing in the Dark again. And uh, it's really fun because everybody goes out. If you've never been to a comedy festival, I recommend it. Try to go to Skank Fest, which is the best. That's the one. Um, and you, you go out, you do all your shows, you're getting added to the shows. Yeah. This show, that show, I did um, What's Your Fucking Deal, Big J show, oh, which yeah. was great. It was a crowd work kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was killer. I did a live, you know what, dude, everyone should go check that out. That was me, Jay, and Bobby. Oh, boy. Great squad. Oh, yeah, well, there's a little bit of a weight differential there. I hope they uh, even that out. Well, it was a, we went in descending order and... Uh, Alright, if that was a flight, that would be teetering. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta um, put you in the middle. Great. It was a classic. We had some great lines. I was very happy with the... Uh, just a great show. And you yeah. and that show really take off. That's where I'm really at my best. You shine. Thank you, you crazy diamond. So we do all the shows, and That's then at done. night, everyone goes back to Antone's, uh-huh. where we had one of the best live Tuesdays ever, mm-hmm. and that comedy jam is an event. I mean, they pack it oh, in. Oh, yeah. It's very exciting, and I go down early. Side stage, I love the band. LMNOP yes. is the name of the band, ah. and Ian Lara is like obsessed with the comedy jam. Well, he's the one. He loves it. He goes down there. He never misses it. So we're side stage. We're rocking out. We're singing along, having the time of our lives. The Sklar Brothers. Oh, a couple of gems. They are gems. I watched their set. Hilarious. I was like on the floor laughing. Talk about quick. They're Zinging, zanging, brotherly love. They're great. And uh, they kicked ass singing, too. And uh, Sagalo brought down the house. He play, He sang uh, all the small things. Ah, uh, yes. Which is song like, about his dick. I'm never um, like, oh man, I love that tune. But then when you're there live, yes, everyone's yes. going fucking nuts. We all know it. It's a it's a shit song, but it's in there. So the first night, they got chairs set up so people can sit during the show, which to me is a mistake. It's a rock show. Ah, uh-huh, standing. Because Skankfest. Low job. There's no chairs, and it's a mosh pit and you're stage diving, the whole thing. So we're there, and with chairs, it's hard to mosh or stage. It's impossible because yeah. there's ch- chairs behind everybody. Uh huh. So Josh goes to uh, stage dive. Uh oh. And he just sort of jumps, and like no one really cut. They kind of like push him back. Oh wow! Because there's not enough space, and also Skankfest. It's like Montana. Uh huh. Everybody's six foot seven, three hundred and eighty right. pounds. It's a bunch of fat fucking maniacs. Yeah, a bunch of capital riders. So Moon Tower, you know, he does a kind of a crowd surf thing, but it was tough. So I told him, I was like, you got to ditch these seats. Get these seats uh-huh. out of here. So he moves the seats for Saturday night, but it's Billy Joel night. Oh so boy. there's not a lot of moshing. No, no. But uh, whatever, you make it fun. And I, you know me, I like to get out there. I want to yeah. dive and mosh and the whole thing. Because like, they do more of a crowd lean, where they just, you lean in and they push you back out. Yeah, but you can, I mean, Skankfest, you can surf around that's a little a bit. That's a surf. And that's also, uh, they take your wallet yeah. and your virginity. But um, 
So Saturday, they get rid of the chairs and everybody crams in, so it's fun, but we're doing Billy Joel songs. And then we're the only the good die young. I throw the mic down. I'm ready to go dance. And Josh is like, point and get out there and oh, yeah. jump. But I'm looking, and I don't want to sound misogynistic here, but it's a bunch of four foot seven girls. Oh, no trans? They're like, just looking at me like, oh. And I'm like, there's no beefcakes. Right. You need a little muscle. I need beef. I need Montana offensive line. Yes, yes. But at the same time, I don't want to be the bitch who's uh, like, get out there. And you're like, yeah. Yeah. I don't wanna... You don't want to squash a couple of Shirley's. So I just walk over there and I kind of did a fall in, ah, like a trust fall. Trust fall. And I let go. Great falls. And immediately, now I can't see, I don't know if there's footage of this, a video or a camera, but I immediately just fall back and I'm head over, heels over head. Yes, yes, yeah, like teapot. I, I look like. You know, my, my, uh-huh, my mother like, in the back of a Nova, the, like feet the, up. The stirrups. <laughs> and, and I'm going over, and and Sarah told me, actually, she's like, I couldn't look. She's like, I, I cover my eyes. Oh, wow. And Luke Mona is like bellowed out. Jordan Jensen was telling me she wasn't, she had looked away, and Luke was like, Joe! Like, it was like a, a real situation, and I don't know who or what or how, but at the last second, somebody came and r- saved wow. me. Wow, Leah Thomas? I was going straight back and over, and my only hope was I was so high in the air that I was like, I think I can do a full wow. flip back onto my feet, because it was a mess. Thank God for that weird retarded kid in the audience. But it was one of those things where you're like, in the moment, I, I actually wasn't too terrified. I was like, all right, i got to try to... F- Flip it, but I was yeah. like, this isn't good. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the whole thing was probably two, three seconds. They finally got me up, and immediately I was like, just send me back. Whoa. And then you're still in the moment, so you're dancing around, but only afterwards, you're like Sarah a was like, she was like, that was insane. She's wow. like, I was genuinely scared, and she thought she, I was going to be like, uh, Who's the asshole that fell off the horse? Christopher Reeves. Yeah, she's like, I thought it was going to be Christopher Reeves. I was going to be feeding you. I don't know why I call him an asshole. I'm sure he's a great guy. Listopher Reeves. But uh, yeah, that was scary, but got the crowd surfing, went crazy, go ape shit, dancing around. Dance in the dark was fun. We stretched it all out, and, and, and Josh got everyone to get low and quiet, and then we all went crazy. Ah, big, big mosh pit thing. And it was fun. Punky Johnson, she sang, um, let's get it, scoop. Uh, I like Punky. What's that song? It's salt and pepper. No, I think it's uh, Missy Elliott. I oh. think it's Missy. Right? It was like a big song, late 90s. I know it. Yeah. Come on, baby. Get the down, da, da. I yeah. want to get this good, but I think it's Missy Elliott. Maybe. I, don't I think. Know. But everyone went crazy for that one. Uh, Sklar Brothers, they did. Um, How about Aguila? They, <laughs> they did a late 90s. Song. Rock, I assume. Yeah, one of those songs that I kind of miss. And then All the Small Things was fun. And John Marco did uh, Piano Man. And then Sklar Brothers did uh, You May... No, John Rizzisi did You May Be Right. Uh, and he's, he's great. He's a cute kid. That guy's Talented. a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. He had lost Feral. his voice, but he just gutted through it. So it's just fun. Everyone's going fucking nuts. And we're moshing and dancing and singing. It really brings everybody together. Well, can I say as an outsider, I'm off in uh, Dicktown Cheese... Face and you, I'm watching the internet, and it's just videos of you. This guy's living life, and you're rah, rocking out, kicking up, knees bent, jumping, sweating, hair flapping, and everybody's like, "This guy's rocking," and all that. And it, it, had, it gave me wedding vibes. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Well, you get that musical. I'm a slave to the groove. You sure. know what I mean? Even rehearsals, I, I love it. I'm just going crazy. I watched everyone else's rehearsal. Just have a great time. Audio slave. Uh, Kara Klink and Lisa Treger did. He was a skater boy. He said, "See you later, oh, that's boy." A good tune. And catchy. These songs are a lot of these. They're cheesy songs, but like the band is like a fucking punk band. Yeah, and so, you're right in it. Yeah, it really kicks ass. So Skankfest, I can't wait. I might bust out some social distortion Ooh. or some Ramones and really get it after because they're essentially a punk. Maybe the Dead Boys, something fun. Well, when you go up, let me do a boss tones where I just stand next to you and dance. I won't sing. Please. Okay, because I can't sing. I have no rhythm, but I'll, I'll pop and jive and lock. Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but old Josh Adam Myers, jam. I asked him, who's the worst one to ever do it? Ah, uh, who do you think? Uh, uh, he, Stephen Hawking? He hit me with it. Um, number one with a bullet. I was so bad. I walked half the group. I lost faith in myself. I had some fans there, and they were like, we got to get out of here. The car's got the meter running. Well, you it picked a tough song. What song did you do? 
Well, he made me do it. I kept saying, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I, I don't consent. And he was like, come on, come on. And I was like, all right. And I picked a song I love, but I don't know the words. What's the song? This is how we do it this by Montel is how Jordan. We do it. That's, That's a, a tough song. It's like a rap song. song. I love that song, but I have to wait. You're like, I'm down from East PA, Harlem to do. I don't know any of that shit. So I, I flubbed, I lost it, and I, I, I tanked. You yeah. You do a song with no, no tune. You got to do a song that you can talk through, like Cake. She's going I like the cake. distance. Do that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like that. It, it. Right. Yeah, you got to just embrace it and plow through, even if you don't know it. But yeah, uh, but yeah he said you're the worst ever. But I believe it. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. I hated every second of it. It's not for me. Yeah, well, come on. Come on with me. We'll I'll, do, I'll, I'll pop I'll get you on my shoulders. Yes. We'll do like a Dennis Rodman, Eddie Vedder thing. Yeah, and... I'll go through your legs. I'll blow you on my knees or sitting. Yeah, it'll be great. We'll, we'll uh, stage dive, the crowd surf. But I, I can't wait for it. got me all cranked up for Skankfest. But... You know, a lot of these aren't even uh, stories, but we went, we hung by the pool. Everyone went down the pool. The whole festival's at the pool, uh, which love was the pool. exciting. And you just Uber stand pool. on the side. You kind of make fun of everybody. A lot sure. of very attractive people. And unattractive. Plenty of that. Yeah, I joined that group. We went out to... Uh... Oh, this was hilarious. The barbecue? Uh, we, went to, we went to Cisco. It was a big breakfast. There was like 12 of us there. That was fun. A lot of laughs. One of the highlights, though, is... Uh, Ian Finance, who's just a nut. He's a character. Oh, yeah. Great He's time. a card. Hard not to love that guy. He comes down. And he goes, I'm jumping in the pool. I'm going to jump in. But everyone's settled in. Everyone's uh -huh. sitting on their chairs. Yeah. So he does like, this is going to be funny. Takes the shirt off. Got the tattoos. He does a big, uh, what's the popular one? Cannonball. Oh, uh, cannonball. Water goes up all over all these comics uh -huh. that are reading and writing, have sunglasses on, and they're just furious. Wow, that's classic John Hughes shit. It was fear. He was, he comes up and he's laughing. He's like, "Woo, Moon Tower, baby!" And behind him, you just—it was like a—it was like a, a Pulitzer Prize-winning photo. Just three black women, like you piece of uh, shit. Ah, can't get that hair wet. And uh, that was great. I and they were uh, a mermaid now. It was uh, great, great fun. We really, we really missed you down there. I miss it too. I love the fest. I had so much fun, but I start to, you know, just think I get too drunk. I, I black out. You're doing six minute sets, the flight, the whole thing. Yeah, everyone was kind of laughing because a lot of the sets they were like six minutes will let you at five, and all of us were like, what? What is that even? What am I doing here? Yeah, but uh, it was fun. It's fun to run up and, and be like, where are you? Oh, I'll meet you there. Right. I'll come by that show, and um, you take over the whole city. You're like cockroaches. It's fun. Just yeah, it was uh, great fun. Sklar Brothers were. I tried to watch some comedy. I saw um, Lachlan Patterson. Oh, he's fun. I love Very that funny. Guy. He's lunch. Sklar Brothers were great. And you want to watch stand up because you don't get to see that many of these comics. But then the hang is so good. The hang it's is hard big. to go down there. But do you go to the after parties because those are pretty legendary? No, well, the it's like what do you call it? Comedy Jam is like the after. It goes. So you have like a lot of people are at the after party and everyone else is at Comedy Jam. And Comedy right. Jam goes to like 1.30. Right. So by the time that ends, I'm like, I'm pooped. Plus I was singing and dancing sure, and sweating. Sure, sure. And uh, it was great fun. And then Sunday, this was brutal. This was lingering in my head. Don't you hate to linger? Oh, I have to let it linger. I was doing Purdue University on Sunday. Oh, the chicken. Now getting from Austin to Purdue is a motherfucker. Yes. Especially, yeah. With the way Austin is, so you gotta. I gotta don't. fly to Atlanta. I have a seven a.m. flight to Atlanta, so five a.m. pickup. Mm. But Saturday night's Billy Joel night. It goes till two a.m. Ah, uh, yeah. And you gotta sing and crazy, and you're sweating, and then you're buzzing because I just got off stage and crowd surfed the whole thing. My ears are ringing, so I fall asleep at like three thirty. Ah, you're gonna have a heart attack. Ak, 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 ak. Uh, alarm goes off at five or four fifty-five. Ah. Get in the car. You fly to Atlanta, a, me, a, a nothing layover. Just had to run to the next uh, game. Ah, you ought to know by now. Fly from there to Indianapolis. Uh-huh. Then I have the car rental. I got to drive to West Lafayette, which is an hour. Oh, my God. What a day. Hour 15, really. And then I get this. They're, these, they're sweet boys up in, and girls in Purdue. They're all young comics. They have a comedy club. Oh. Not a club, but like a, 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 group. a group. I love a group. Group, so hate group. They're called... Uh, Produce suck. Ah. Stand up club. Wait, produce suck. Because it's Purdue stand up oh, club. Oh, I see. I see. Hey, they came up with the title. Purdue I don't know. Purdue stand up club. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. Per Purdue suck. Purdue suck. Got it. So I go up there. Ah. They want to do a, a Q and A after the show. 
That's what I thought. Uh-huh. So I go, yeah, Q and A, okay. And it's hard to explain because a lot of times I don't want to sound like an ass, but it's like the people have a big thing going on. So to them, it's a big thing. We're gonna have Joe List, and we're gonna do Q and A, and it's exciting. But while they're messaging, I'm at Moon Tower. Ah. I got five show, and they're adding you to show. All right, we need you to do this show. Right. Then after you have to run, you're going to go first on this show and run to this show. Yeah, you're blowing up. And then I get like a, so we can do the Q and A, and I go, yeah, yeah, Q and A. All yeah. right, great. And then I got to sing the song, and I got to memorize this. Then we're having a podcast over here. Right. So around four, uh, yeah, okay, great, sure. What the fuck? And then, <laughs> then it comes time for the day, and I, I think you're like me. It's it's hard for me to plan out to really put myself in a place yes, days from now. Yes. I'm in this moment, hundred percent. And you got to get there. That's all. That's all stuff too with the car and the flights and the layover. So then Sunday morning, finally I get on the plane. I'm secure on the plane, and I'm like this. What am I doing today? Uh, <laughs> so I fly from. Austin to Atlanta, Atlanta to Indy, get in the car, drive 75 minutes, check into the hotel. I got to eat. I haven't eaten since the 70s. Sure. I get my burrito, shove that in my ass. Celine Dion. Now I go, I got 35 minutes till the Q&A. Oh, wow. And then the Bruins game is started. Ah. I watch them drop the puck. Haven't showered. And I'm like, fuck these kids. I hope they all die. I don't I want anyone doing it. comedy. I know it too well. Then I go over there. I love there. fucking kids. The, the, the classroom is the old desk where the wooden desk is attached to oh, the chair. Oh, classic. And you walk in and the moment you see these kids bright eyed uh, and bushy dicked and they're like, Mr. List, we want to ask you some questions. It all falls away. Now you're hard. And you go, you know what? I'm here for you. I'm yes, here. yes. Once you see the faces, I'm telling you, face to face changes everything. Faces everything, and they're sw- some of them are in suits, and what? they're just they're all excited to be doing comedy, and uh, it was quite delightful. Yeah. To hang, and I go, ah, fuck the Bruins game. Sure, there'll be more playoff games. <laughs> I, well, how often do you get to talk to an 18-year-old kid about comedy? Yeah. But it was uh, it was really nice. They were all very sweet, and they were all very excited, and it was fun to talk to them. Then I go back. I grab a half-hour nap, come back for the show. Wait a minute. Oh, wow. This okay. is before the show. So this is at 4 p.m. Oh, Show's that's your whole day. And that, that's how I felt. I was like, why wouldn't we just do this in the dressing room of the show? I know. We'll you be hanging out. out. Now i got to go back and forth. This is too much. I Bad planning. Sorry, kids. You seem like nice people. Very nice people. So we do the Q&A, I go back, take my shower, take a nap. I'm like, on, I'm all fucked up. I think that's why I'm sick now. I'm on like 80 minutes sleep. I'm all whacked out. Time changes. Yep. Go over. And I thought this was going to be like, some of these college gigs are like in a cafe or whatever. Yeah. Big, glorious wow. theater. Wow. How about that? Like a thousand kids come. What? This is huge. Yeah. And, and, and colleges, you know, it's like they're... Gen Z, all you hear about Gen Z, and they, they hate everything, and they're afraid of everything. Yeah. And I go, so is there language? They go, we don't care. We're a freedom of speech. Talk about whatever. Say anything. Hell yeah. A bunch of the young comics go up. There's like five of them. They're, they're all very funny and, and I sweet. Love it. The, the future of comedy, I think, is in a good place. Hallelujah. Well, you start yelling at the older folk, will you? Yeah. Don't chill the fuck out. But, so I did a full hour. I was having so much fun. I did 60 minutes. No one was on their phone at any point. I even stopped. I was like, I can't believe none of you are on your phones. Wow. And they're laughing at everything. There's no ooze. There's no like, whoa. They oh, just were dying it. laughing. The comics were great. Great hang. Great night. And it really filled me with hope. I love to hear it. The youth is our future. The youth? Hitler sure. youth. Yeah. They were... Uh, they were great, so thank you guys for having me, and uh, it was it was fantastic, and uh, I loved every second. And uh, you got to get up to Purdue University. I'm down now. Let me just—I know we got to wrap up, but these Q and A's—they're always. I always feel like I'm letting them down. I know because they go, "How do I do this?" And I go, "I don't know. Just go out and start doing it." And they, they want some shortcut. They want some magical answer. But most of it, life is just like, "I want to be buff. I'll go to the gym." I know, but what else? Lift weights. Yeah, you know, and they don't want to hear that. It's hard too because I, I was. Uh, Sarah and I always laugh. Like these young comics ask, like, "What, what do you do to this?" I'm like, "I started in a different century. It's a whole different world. It's yeah, like literally now with uh, you know with Zoom and the TikTok and the YouTube. I'm like, I, I don't even, I don't even have any idea. I know. And there's a comedy scene in West Lafayette. There's like 30 comedians at Purdue University. There used to be 30 comedians in New York. Yes. It's crazy now. It's popular. So it was tough, but I, I think I gave them some good nuggets, and they're just like writing stuff down. And they were ah, very, it's adorable. very sweet, and you feel like 100 years old. They all start, they're all born after I started doing comedy. <laughs> that is wacky. Um, Cuckoo. It was great. 
great weekend. I feel like shit now, but uh, it was awesome. And uh, you'll be rested up by Friday. You'll be right as gain. All right. Well, and anyways, folks. So this weekend, you can come see me in Tempe. I'm so excited oh, to be doing this. Oh, love the temperature. Temp- Tempe Improv, May 11th to 13th. Luke Bonas will be with me. He's hey. hilarious. It's all weekend. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're going to the ball game on Sunday. Excited Woo! about that. And uh, oh god, I got to look at my book. June 7th, Hollywood Improv. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Buy those tickets so we can add that second show. It might already be added. I don't know. I love LA. Um, Spokane, June 1st through the mm, 3rd. Cans. Hollywood Improv, uh, the June 7th, June 16th, 17th, Columbus Funny Bone. Live Tuesdays with stories at the Gramercy, June 27th. Hell yeah, you got that right, Dickless. Don't miss that. And then uh, Irvine, California, July 13th mm. through 15th. San Jose Improv, July 20th through 22. Yeah. August is crazy. Providence, August 3rd through 5th. Port- Portland, Oregon. Everyone keeps asking me about Portland. Oh. August 10th through the 12th. I will be shivering under my bed at that fucking Good luck. city. Good REI just took off out of there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I don't know whether they're going to get into new tents. Well, Monas was there. He's from there, and he's like, it's the worst place I've ever been in my life. It's bad news. Walmart left. McDonald's left. And then uh, Dallas Improv, August 24th through the 26th. Oh, and Tuesdays with Stories live in Philadelphia. Yes. August uh, 22nd. Forgot about that. That's, That's going to be fun. So get those tickets. We're branching out, folks. We're coming to your town. Yes. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. The special will be out at some point. I don't know when. All right. I'll be at Long Island at uh, Long Beach, some club there. Give it a goog. I'll be in Dayton. Uh, I think that's past. Australia. Going down to the mothership for a couple days. Woo. I want to check that out. And there's one more. Oh, Toronto. Toronto at the Comedy Bar. So uh, come on out, then I'll see you folks down under in the big Ozzy, Ozzy, oi, oi, oi. Well, fuck a koala. What do you got, Chuckster? I got a podcast with my buddy Ray Harrington. He's a great comic, and uh, I don't know what episode just went up, but this Wednesday, May 10th, Matt Wayne. Hey, hey. Dubs. hey. Wayne's Wonder, World. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, a lot of fun. We always uh, have a big sit down with all Joe's friends and we yeah. have a big talk about him. And, <laughs> Seems oh. like you're using his whole Rolodex yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Rogers reached out to me. He's like, oh, oh, oh nice. Yeah. He reached indeed. out with his cock. Yeah. Yeah. Unbearablepod.com. Yeah, and uh, join the Patreon. We did a commentary for Comedian. It was yes. amazing. It was one of the funnest things we've done in a long time. Killer. So. Full commentary, like over an hour and a half. Yeah, it's Woo. pretty great. Best Patreon going. No I doubt agree. about it. Thank you, folks. We'll see you all in hell. Queep it up. Praise Allah. And- no one wants to be